Ransom of Red Chief by William Sidney Porter We were down south in Alabama, Bill Driscoll and myself, when this kidnapping idea struck us. Bill and me had about $600, and we needed just $2,000 more to buy some land in western Illinois. We figured that family love is strongest in semi-rural communities and decided to do our kidnapping in Summit, a small town. We selected for our victim the only child of a prominent citizen named Ebenezer Dorset, who was known for his wealth. The kid was a boy of ten, with freckles and bright red hair. Bill and me figured that Ebenezer would agree to pay a ransom of $2,000. But wait till I tell you what happened. About two miles from Summit was a little tree-covered mountain. On the rear slope of this mountain was a cave. There we stored provisions. One evening, we drove in a buggy past old Dorset's house. The kid was playing in the street. Hey, says Bill, would you like some candy? The boy put up a fight, but eventually we got him in the buggy and drove up to the cave. After dark, I drove the buggy back to the village I had hired it in. When I walked back to the cave, Bill was examining and treating the scratches and bruises on his face and legs. There was a fire burning and the boy was sitting by it, with two buzzard tail feathers stuck in his red hair. He points a stick at me and says, Ha! Do you dare to enter Red Chief's camp? He's all right now, says Bill. We're playing a game. I'm old Hank, Red Chief's captive. That boy seemed very happy. The fun of camping out had made him forget that he was a captive. He immediately named me Snake Eye, the spy. Then we had supper, and he filled his mouth full of bread and gravy and talked. His speech went something like this. I never camped out before. It's fun. But I had a pet once, and I was nine last birthday. I want some more gravy. Does the trees moving make the wind blow? We had five puppies. What makes your nose so red, Hank? My father has lots of money. Are the stars hot? Do oxen make any noise? Why are oranges round? A parrot can talk. But a monkey or a fish can't. Every few minutes he would remember that he was Red Chief and would let out a war whoop and made old Hank shiver. The boy had Bill terrorized from the start. I said, Kid, would you like to go home? Ah, oh, what for? says he. I don't have any fun at home. I hate school. I like camping. You won't take me home, Snake Eye, will you? Not right away, said I. Yay! said he. I never had such fun in all my life. At eleven o'clock, we spread down some wide blankets and went to bed. Red Chief kept us awake for three hours, jumping up and screeching in our ears. At last, I fell into a troubled sleep and dreamed that I had been kidnapped and chained to a tree by a pirate with red hair. Just at daybreak, I was awakened by awful screams from Bill. I jumped up to see what the matter was. Red Chief was sitting on Bill's chest, holding him by the hair. In his other hand, he had a sharp knife, with which he was threatening Bill. I got the knife away from the kid and made him lie down again. But from that moment, Bill's spirit was broken. He laid down on his side of the bed but he never closed an eye again in sleep as long as that boy was with us. Ain't it awful, Sam? No one will pay money to get a little imp like that back. His parents will, said I. I went to the top of the little mountain and looked around. Over towards summit, I expected to see a search party. But what I saw was a peaceful landscape. Perhaps, says I to myself, it has not yet been discovered. Then I took Bill aside and told him I was going to Poplar Cove, a little village three miles away,
to find out what reaction the kidnapping had caused. You know, Sam, says Bill, I've stood by you in earthquakes, fire and flood, in card games, dynamite outrages, police raids, train robberies and cyclones. I had never lost my nerve yet till we kidnapped that kid. You won't leave me long with him, will you? I'll be back soon, says I. You must keep the boy amused till I return. Let's write the letter to Mr. Dorset, demanding the ransom and how it should be paid. Bill and I wrote it, while Red Chief strutted up and down, guarding the cave. Bill begged me tearfully to make the ransom $1,500 instead of 2000 So to relieve Bill, I agreed. Ebenezer Dorset Esquire, we have your boy. It is useless for anyone to attempt to find him. We will only return him if you meet these terms. We demand $1,500, the money to be left at midnight tonight, at the same box as your reply, at the loan tree. Send your answer by messenger at half past eight tonight. If you attempt any treachery, you will never see your boy again. If you pay the money, he will be returned to you safe and well. These terms are final, and if you do not agree to them, no further communication will be attempted. Two desperate men.